Nice to see you. How's the audio? How is the audio? Can someone let me know? I don't know if I have any moderators on tonight or not. This is kind of a, oh, it's good. Thank you. Thank you. This is kind of a spontaneous, a spontaneous uh, teaching tonight of some notes that I took. And I'm calling this conversations that you must have before you marry. And I know a lot of guys will say, well, heck no, I'm never getting married. A lot of women might say that, heck no, I'm never going to get married. But this is what I want you to think about. I'm interested in helping you have conversations with your loved one and the one that loves you. That's what we're going to do tonight. Ah, good. Tony Bruno is on. My brother. He is the moderator. God forgives, but the band hammer doesn't. <laughs> so here we go. It's probably going to be a short video, but it's going to be powerful. It's something that I have thought of deeply, and I wish, I wish somebody asked me these questions when I was a young man. And because I didn't have these kind of conversations, I think I could have avoided a lot of uh, distress in my life. Thank you for the super chat, Christian Rodriguez. Much thanks. I think this is going to help a lot of people tonight. I really do. And this is going to be conversations that you must have before you marry or even get serious. There's some people that, that say they're never going to get married. I get that. I understand that. I was like that at one time. Uh, before I was married, then I got married. And then after that, I was like, I'm never getting married again. And I've only thought recently in the past couple of years that's something that I want to do. And for no other reason than I believe it's, for me, it's the right thing. But it's not the right thing at any cost. So let's just start talking about that. I'm not going to get into the philosophy of what is the point of getting married. Those that are watching will already see the value of long-term companionship and partnership. And if you don't like it, then that's fine. There's always other channels where they don't like marriage and you'll get along just great over there. So uh, be respectful tonight of the teaching. I'm not going to do a lot of responding tonight, but I want you to just be a student. And if you have a pen and paper, write these things down or listen to it again at another another occasion and let it be a uh, springboard for you and the person that you love okay number one the conversation that you must have before you get married or before you settle down or think about having a long-term relationship question number one what are your expectations about being married? Is it just, is marriage to you just dating, but you have a ring on your hand? Is it, is marriage something that you've always thought that you need to do? Is it pressure from your family? What is marriage? What are your expectations about being married? If you are a man, is the expectation that you're going to have sex every day. And now you can do it without guilt. If you're a woman, is your expectation about marriage is that you're going to be supported for the rest of your life and never have to work ever again outside the home, that you want to be a housewife, a homemaker. What are your expectations about marriage? And these are great things to talk about. Even if you are never going to get married, 
you're just sure that you'll never marry. What a great series of questions to have a conversation about with your girlfriend or your boyfriend. And if you are engaged, this is super important. Number two, how will you celebrate the holidays? The, oh, it's all good. They can believe what they want. I'll believe what I want. What I want. We'll agree to disagree. Not that simple once you're married. How will you celebrate the holidays? I celebrate the Christian holidays. That's who I am. My wife will celebrate the Christian holidays. What I won't do is I will not marry a woman who is not Christian. I will not marry a Jewish woman. I will not marry an atheist. I will not marry a Muslim. I will not marry a Hindu. I will marry a Christian woman. And we will celebrate the Christian holidays. That's what I want to do. That is a deal breaker. And you have to decide if each one of these things is a deal breaker. And compare notes with your, with your lover. Three, what if I lose everything? What if you lose everything? What happens? Will they stick with you? What if you lose your job? You've watched me tweet these things in the past few days about men share your shit with another man. Your wife is not your shoulder to lean on. Do not look for her advice other than cooking. How does this tie look? Do these pants match this jacket? When it comes to strategy, life strategy, life direction, men, I can only speak to men on this part. Go to a brother. Go to a friend. Do not go to your wife. You think, you see, you made a commitment if you're married a long time ago, and I know you'll stick with it because you're a solid man. Women, even though they make a commitment and they take vows, they almost renew, they refresh that commitment almost every day, just like you turn your phone off and let it reboot. Turn the computer off, wait 60 seconds, turn it back on. The reality is you need to refresh your vows every single day. And men do not, as T21 Surfer says, transparency can be a killer. Talk to your brother, talk to your father, talk to your friend. Your wife, your girlfriend is not a shoulder to lean on. She is always looking for you to act in a way that is consistent with her respect for you. People say, well, I, I want to keep it real with her. I'm just very honest. Okay, I'll be here to coach you when your marriage ends, when your relationship ends. Men, the whole concept... Oh, uh, welcome Lucas Bittencourt, who is a, a new moderator. He is a blue wrench. Uh, remember, God forgives... But the ban hammer doesn't. Disrespect is not tolerated. Only intelligence amongst the beasts. So, do not cry on your woman's shoulder. Suffer. I don't want to say suffer with stoicism. But suffer privately. Your transparency will kill your relationship. Those of you who are divorced, you already know that what I'm talking about is the truth. Do not show your weakness. She married a strong man, not a wishy-washy man. She's dating a strong man, not a wishy-washy man. I'm not putting women down. What I am saying is this. Share your shit with another man. So, what if I lose everything? Will she stick with you? I had a woman tell me once, I'll, 
I will move with you to the ends of the earth. I remember it. One woman actually said, I'll live in a dumpster with you. I would live in a dumpster with you. Okay. That didn't last very long. And then she started talking about she wants a walk-in closet the size of an airplane hangar. That was only a few months after knowing her. When the demands start coming out. And then just you being yourself, keeping it real, is not enough. That is always bullshit. That's chemical romance. That's her hormones and the chemicals giving her that loving feeling that she hasn't had in a long time. They're all lies. It's all a big, big lie. And I'm not saying on purpose. People can't help the chemical romance that they have flowing through their veins. Everybody's in a chemical romance for about the first two years of a relationship. Do not kid yourself. The honeymoon is over after about two years. That's when people start really showing their true colors. That's why I say date long, marry slow, divorce fast. During the exploration phase, you should not be afraid to eliminate, time out, terminate, end, cut the relationship. Have a loose grip on things. Uh, let's see. All right. So here's a here's a flashlight. No, not a flashlight. Let's take a little lantern. Okay. It's a lantern. Let me just grip it. Try to pull it out of my hand. It can't. I'm holding onto it tight. A loose grip would mean that someone can just take it. If it wants to go, it goes. If it wants to leave your hand, it leaves your hand. No, no death grip on anything or anybody. Get this through your head. Before you get into a relationship, if you're in a relationship, make that change. You are bound for hurt, sleepless nights, loss of hunger, confusion, despair, the loop of despair. And that's when you fall into, if you're a man, the whole red pill thing, and you get this bitterness about life. If you're a woman, you fall into the cynicism that men are assholes. It's not like that. I, I can appreciate some teachings from other disciplines, such as Buddhism. And I'm not a Buddhist. I can appreciate sayings and principles from science. I'm not making these things my religion. I do believe that all truth is God's truth. Now hear me out on this. There is a statement that says, attachment is the root of all unhappiness. Your attachment to things. Loosen your grip. And you will be happy. Think about times in your life when you were unhappy. What, what was the problem? You were gripping too tight to things or people. Lose the attachment. Loosen the grip. I know a lot of people always mention that scene from the movie Heat with Al Pacino and Robert De Niro about, you know, I don't know, some, somebody, somebody bring it up in the comments in the live chat about being able to walk away from things. Now, what you don't want to do is be able to walk away from your wife. You do want to fight for things. But... I will tell you this, you fight for a marriage if both people want it. Never fight to win anyone back. You win nobody back. If you win somebody back, you already lost because it took your effort. Marriage and relationships are completely 100% voluntary. Two people coming together, not one person like, trying to pull another person over to their side. Because the minute you stop pulling, they stray. 
relationships have to be 100% voluntary. And that is what the exploration phase in relationships are all about. Three, what is the most you will spend on shoes? A man can ask a woman that. Could be some other addiction she has. When it comes to a man, what would it be? How much would you be spending on books or tools or the hobbies or your cars? Excuse me. How much will you spend? You need to know that. If you're a man, are you going to fund your wife's shoe addiction? Ma'am, are you going to, if you're working, are you going to be willing to contribute money to your husband's tool or book addiction or his Corvette and truck and high-performance vehicles? You need to ask each other, what will you spend money on? What are you willing to not spend money on? That's number four. There's a total of 19 things here. You're going to need to take notes. Number five, how much do we need to do together? You know, when you first meet, you can't spend time apart. All the time apart is, oh my gosh, I need to be with you. I think of you when I go to sleep. How much time do you really need to be together? Talk about that. Have a conversation about that. Remember, tonight's video is called Conversations that you must have before you marry. And this can go apply to long-term relationships as well. How much time do you need to spend together? I'm a man that loves solitude. I am in heaven right now. I have cigars, pipes, tools, my dehydrator out here, kites. I talked about kites the other night. I have kites. I love kites. What else do I have here? I have an antique dresser right here that I'm going to refinish this spring. And it'll be a gift for my wife, whoever that will be. It's a beautiful antique dresser. It's about a hundred, uh, let's see, it's 150 years old. It's a dresser that's 150 years old. I want to refinish it. I want to strip the paint off of it. I want to put a finish on it with tongue oil. And I have a beautiful Victorian mirror that will go on the dresser. That will be for my wife if I get married. If I don't get married, it'll just go in the spare bedroom. I'm going to pour myself into that in my spare time. It's a project that I'm going to have. I like time to myself. I want to garden. I want to compost. I'm a composting freak. I like taking kitchen scraps and turning them into rich compost. I like my comic books, but not, not modern comics. I'm talking golden age comics. And then the only modern things I like are uh, graphic novels which about every few years I read the Sandman series. Big fan of Sandman. Love that. But I have tons of comics. Old comics from when I grew up. The Golden Age that I love. I'm reading, uh, going through Christopher Morley books. A woman is not going to understand that. I need time apart to do that. And I go off in my head into whatever world, that fiction world is. I enjoy that. How much time do I need to spend together? How much time do I need to spend apart? That is going to be absolutely crucial for you to discuss. The reality is this, that whoever I marry will be with me through the death of my parents. Boy, that's a hard topic. My parents are older, much older. They've been on this earth for eight decades. 
and more. They will be leaving this earth and there's going to be a reaction from me. Will they support me when my parents leave this earth? Will I be able to support them? What is my relationship to them? You always hear about mother-in-law jokes. Will I be able to love and care for my mother-in-law? My former mother-in-law became my enemy when my marriage ended. I never want that to happen again. Never want that to happen. Divorce is a funny thing. You go from loving people and sending birthday cards and buying Christmas presents to being mortal enemies. And it's weird how that happens. And her friends, their friends are now not big fans of yours, if not enemies. Number seven, how, will, how often will you need to go home? How often do they need to go see their mother and father or mother or father? That's going to be important. And is it a trip? Is it a day trip? Is it just a ride across town? Do they need to hop on a plane? Where will they stay? What is going to be their role in their parents' life as their parents age? That's a big deal. How often will they need to see their parents? Never be the kind of person that keeps your spouse, your lover, away from their parents. Eight, how important is sex? How important is sex? Do you think you're going to have sex every day when you get married? I heard someone say, take a jar. Let me find a jar here. If I have any jars. Well, here's a jar of tobacco. Ah, let's see. Here's a jar of tobacco. But let's just say this is empty. Okay. You get married. And during your first year of marriage, you put a Skittle in this jar. Okay. After one year, this jar is going to be filled up with Skittles. After a year. Now, after the first year of marriage, what I want you to do is every time you have sex, take a Skittle out. The reality is you will never empty the jar ever for the rest of your marriage. So obviously things are going to be not as passionate and not as frequent as you might think. How important is sex to you? What if you just, what if you just need, what if you're a guy and you just need to get off? What if your woman is the hold me, hold me, don't leave me type? And normally you are the hold her and don't leave her type. But what if you just want to relieve some anxiety and have a quickie and run out of the house? Just give it to her quick. You relieve your load. You go to work. The issue is this, is that you need to be on the same page with sex. How important is sex to you? That's number eight. Number nine, what is your opinion on porn, flirting, opposite sex friendships, acquaintances, spending time with others, including the opposite sex? What if I meet a woman who has male friends? I already made a decision. I will never marry a woman who has a ton of male friends. It just ain't going to happen. That will not happen. I don't even want to be around a woman who's had... I don't want to be around other people who've ever been with my wife intimately. I'm not interested in that. And I'm not interested in having my wife be around any women that I was with intimately. It is a new life. There's a reason why we call it a new life. We don't want to bring the old life into being. Those that are moderating, don't be afraid to answer questions that people have. You've been chosen. I think I have four moderators. I believe there's um, uh, the Bearded Welshman is a moderator here. I don't know if he's on board with this. 
T21 surfer, Tony Bruno, my brother, Lucas Bittencourt, and Bald Bastard that we affectionately call BB. We have four. And I wouldn't mind uh, having one or two more moderators, possibly uh, one of the bears, the regular bears. So uh, keep that in mind. And you know what the concept and the goal of being a moderator is, is we don't tolerate disrespect and, uh, and we answer questions. I can't answer all the questions. And if you are a moderator, like I said, don't be afraid to answer people's questions or direct them to resources. What is your opinion on porn, flirting, opposite sex friendships, acquaintances, spending time with others? I did a tweet earlier today about what I think as a man are the three like worst women, possibly four women that as a man, I don't feel are a good risk for you. Everything's a risk. There's no guarantees. Everything is a risk. First one was a hairdresser. I don't think hairdressers are good. They always have their hands on men's ha head, hair, neck. Every man wants to screw his hairdresser. If he doesn't go to a barber, he wants to... Have, if he's totally honest, he probably wouldn't mind having sex. I've dated hairdressers. For me, oh, well, you have trust issues. You're damn right I do, because I know men, and I am a man. And I've toned it down over the years. But hairdressers, bad move for any man, any man. Especially when... When the clients will say something like, well, can you come to my house and cut my hair? Bad move. Bad move. Second, actors. Female actors, actresses. Dated them before. They're kissing or doing a sex scene or a love scene or a romantic scene with another actor. I don't care if it's just acting. I don't want my woman's lips on another man's face or mouth or body or his mouth on her face or body or whatever. Not interested. I remember I dated a beautiful actress once, and that was just a source of contention. And that you're the guy, you're the paranoid one. Then all of a sudden it's your problem. But you knew about that before you started dating the actress. Bad move. So we have hairdressers, actresses. Third one is models. Models thrive on attention. A model will give up you before he or she gives up their career. And you have to realize this. You started out as a fan and transitioned to be a lover. When it comes to actresses and models, you always start out as a fan. It's never. It's, you don't just meet a model or an actor in Starbucks. And then just start dating. Oh, you're a model? Oh, you're an actress? You become a fan. Their career comes first. I'd like to add a fourth. is women who travel for business. Man, I've struggled with that. I still struggle with that to this day. I always have a, a, a difficult time with a woman who travels for business. I have a thing that I call enhanced accountability. I want her, I want to know where she is. I want to know where she is and be accountable. It's, it's a tough, it's a tough thing because you're going to be the one who's going to be called jealous. Well, you're damn right. I'm jealous. I've had some women say to me, I wish I wish my boyfriend was more jealous of me. I wish my husband was more jealous of me. He doesn't care what I do, where I go, or who I do it with. There is a healthy jealousy. There is also a psychotic jealousy as well. If you find yourself checking your woman's, or if you're a woman, checking your man's social media and where they went to the point where you're following them, getting in your vehicle, end it. End it. Have the talk with them and end it. It's not a good thing. 
what is their opinion about porn? Have they watched porn? Do they watch porn? Will you watch it together? I am not a porn guy. I don't like it. I don't, I don't think it's healthy. I think most people who are porn stars have had uh, some pretty messed up lives. And I, I don't want anything to do with that. I'm, get into the habit of inviting good things in your life. What you don't want to do is kind of like that Dan Aykroyd thing. Remember, Jane, you're an ignorant slut. I like that in a woman. Mm -mm. Those edgy women who live on the edge are kind of fun to fool around with. They're fun. They're party girls. You don't want to invite them into your life on a permanent basis. Uh-uh. Not good. Opposite sex friendships. I will not I will not marry a woman who has many opposite sex friendships. Ain't happening. I don't think it's hap I don't think you will ever be happy with that. Because most people don't tell the truth about their opposite sex friendships. They don't tell the truth about it. You saw my video yesterday that I did with my friend Judy. You saw that. Judy's a friend of mine. Uh, I was just divorced and she just lost Rick. He died of, uh, of uh, what did he die of? Cancer. Leukemia, right? Is that what it was? And we never got intimate in all these years. And we've remained friends. She can talk to me anytime she wants. We've done a lot of social things together. And she might even be watching this right now. I don't know, but she can verify this. And I will have to say that it, I don't want to say it's a relationship that I'm proud of, but I am proud of it in the sense that the minute you have sex with somebody, I don't want to say it clouds the issues. For some people, it does cloud the issues. But for most people, it changes the relationship the minute you have sex with them. It changes the relationship. And I like what I have with Judy as a friend. And I'm fond of her as a friend, and she's fond of me as a friend. She's had to go to dinners and events and wanted a man to accompany her. And she knows I look good in a suit. And what do you need me to wear? Do you need me to wear a black tie? Do you need me to wear a suit? Do you want me to be all GQ'd up? I'll do that for you. So we go to a party or some dinner, and she's on my arm. I'm on her arm, whatever you want to call it, and accompanying her. And at the end of the night, it's just a little side hug. Good night. Thank you for coming with me tonight. That was great. And I've done that before. That's cool. It was never, come stay at my house overnight. Come on in for a drink. Never anything like that. So boundaries have to be uh, drawn. And I'm not talking about being a prick with your boundaries. You don't have to. But the reality is, I don't want to know men who my wife has slept with. I'm not interested in, even though it happened 20 years ago, not interested. Not interested. That will never happen. What is your opinion on uh, spending time with the opposite sex of any type? Oh, I'm going to, you know, your wife says, I'm going to take a walk at Valley Forge Park. We're going to do the five-mile loop. Me and John are. No, you're not. No, you're not. And I'm not going to go take a walk in Valley Forge Park with Karen, if I'm married or in a long-term, serious, committed relationship with somebody that's moving towards marriage. I'm not going to do that. That would be disrespectful. So these things have to be talked about. That was number nine. Number 10, what do you admire about me? What are the things that you like about me? What are the things about me that irritate you? You got to have that talk. You got to have that talk. Number 11, 
how do you see us 10 years from now? I've had this conversation with people that I've dated. This is my 60th year. In 10 years, I'm going to be 70. If you think I look old now, wait 10 years. If you think you look old now, wait till you become, you know, add 10 years to you. I've dated younger women. I've dated older women. I've dated women my age. What will our relationship look like in 10 years? Will you be with me if I can't climb the stairs? How about if I have a doctor appointment every week? Now, this is these are my concerns as an older, seasoned man. You got to have these talks. You got to have these talks. How do you see us 10 years from now? What if you're with a woman and she has breast cancer? What if, what if your woman has a beautiful body and then she has breast cancer and loses her figure? What will you do? Will you still love her the same? What if she has a, a disease, loses a limb? What if she starts to lose her mind and go a little senile? It's very tough. Very, very tough. Number 12, how do you handle stress? How do we handle stress? That's number 12. How do you handle stress? I have found, especially now during this coronavirus thing, I need to be a rock of strength for my family. Whether or not they need me, they need to see a strong man. They don't need to see somebody watching the news and panicking about quarantines and lockdowns and maybe we don't have enough toilet paper or some nonsense like that. How do you handle stress? As a man, I'll speak to the men right now. As a man, you need to be the rock. You need to be the rock for your wife. Excuse me. You need to be stable for her. Her emotions are different than yours. Ladies who are watching this, I'm going to give you a tip. And there's a fine line between shaming your man and gently instructing him when it comes to stress. Don't, ladies, do not... Ma'am, listen to me right now. I'm going to look you right in the eye. Okay, ma'am? Yes. Say to your man, say this to him, when you see him getting a little emotional. I need you to grab him by the collar, by the lapels, by the face, whatever his name is. Let's just say his name is David. David, look at me. I need you to be strong for me. Can you do that? And he will man up for the first time in his life because no one ever said that to him. You may never have to tell him that again. It's not shaming him. It's not like, you know, man up, you pussy. I married a man, not a boy. Don't do that to your husband. Say things to him like, now, now look at me when I'm, tell, when I'm talking to you, okay? Tell him this. Tell him, I need you to be strong for me. That's a transformative question, statement. Can you be strong for me? Powerful, isn't it? Powerful. How do we handle stress? Two years ago, you saw me do a video out of my back deck about decisiveness where I played the part of the male and the female. I said, where do you want to go for dinner? I don't know. Where do you want to go for dinner? I don't know. Where do you want to go for dinner? I don't know. What are you hungry for? I don't know. What are you hungry for? It drives women crazy. Crazy men. Decisiveness is strength. Plan the dinner. 
I'm not saying not be thoughtful. Honey, I know you like Indian food. So I decided we're going to taking you out for Indian food tonight. Middle Eastern food, Italian food, French food, pizza. But make the decision, make the reservation, be the man for her. Okay. When it comes to stressful situations, we're still on number 12. When it comes to stressful situations, this is super important. This is what we are going to do. Emulate calm. Be the leader. Provide direction. Never say to your woman, what should we do? What do you think we should do? Dude, you are the captain of the ship, and I'm not talking about being a prick and owning a slave. Provide direction to your woman and to your family. Men, now listen here, buddy. I want to tell you something, just like I talked to the ladies a few, a few seconds ago. This is going to be important for you. I need you to look into your woman's eyes and say, Trust me, everything is going to be okay. I need you to follow me. Will you do that? And I guarantee you she will say yes. Now, if you're just in the middle of a fight and you end the fight with those words, don't expect a positive response. But don't do it from across the room. Do it in a loving manner. You might want to put your arms around her and say, Honey, you know I love you, don't you? Yes. You know I, I want the best for you, right? Yes. Then I need you to trust me and trust the direction that I'm taking us in. Will you do that? She will melt in your arms. Be the leader, men. Be the leader. It's never too late to start being the man in your marriage and relationship. And you'll notice I am stopping. Follow my lead. Yes, you've heard me say that before. Follow my lead. Correct. You've, you've heard me say that I'm not talking about girlfriends and par partners. I don't do that much anymore. I talk about girlfriend, fiance, wife. Boyfriend, fiance, husband. Um, I took a bold move and started talking about things that are permanent. And I have an army of people who are looking at me going, wow, no one talks about that anymore. Especially a lot of the, the red pill kind of guys. They, they think I'm, they demean me. They put me down constantly. I'm not a martyr. I don't care. It doesn't, doesn't hurt me at all. I just don't. I've been on this earth longer than any of them. And I know what works, and I know what doesn't. And I know happy people when I see them. Thirteen. What is your relationship to drugs or alcohol? Do they got to have a drink every night to calm down? Do they need a cocktail? Do they need to go to a happy hour? Do they have to stop at a bar and slam a few beers and a few shots before they come home? Is, is the woman a box wine fanatic? Does she have to have her wine? Since I've been single, women are into vodka. It's like jet fuel. No more pretty cocktails. Women are just going right for the damn vodka now. Twist a lemon, some ice cubes, that's it. I want to get from A to drunk as quickly as possible. That's why you date long, marry slow, divorce fast. How do they calm themselves down? What is the relationship to drugs or alcohol? Are you, did you meet a woman or a man that needs to get high? I've gone on dates with women that are like, are you cool with 420? I'm like, yeah, you know, all right, whatever. I, but 
How about the woman that has to get high every time you're with her? Or the woman that has to have a drink to calm down every time you're with her? That's really hard. There's nothing worse than making love to a drunk woman or a high woman. Horrible. It's horrible. Or if you're a woman being made love to by a drunk or high man. It's not a good thing. Number 14. How will we handle finances? Who makes the money? Who spends the money? Who has the accounts? Who has the passwords to the accounts? Who carries the debit cards, the credit cards? How are we going to handle finances? Shopping. Clothes buying. Vacations. It's tough. These are conversations. That's why I said these are conversations that need to be had before you get married or even consider marriage. 15. How should household chores be divided? That's a big deal. The division of labor in the house. Gosh, if you've ever seen that five love languages test, which I I'm 50-50 on it. Take it with a grain of salt. But it is interesting. There is one element in there called acts of service. Men, do you help your wife out? I, I'll never forget, I dated a woman many, many years ago. I was in my 20s. And her mother and father seemed to have a nice relationship. And they frequently invited me over for dinner. Because they were checking me out. I know they were, but I noticed uh, they had a nice, they had a nice marriage and it was just really kind of cool. She would make the dinner. He would get up, collect the plates, just put it quickly, put them in the dishwasher. He'd plug in the coffee pot and cut a piece of pie for everybody, bring over the dessert. She made the dinner, served the dinner. He got up, made the coffee, and gave dessert to everybody. And I made a comment at the dinner table in front of the whole family because it was a very talkative, loving family. <coughs> and I said, how do you, how do you guys do this? How's, how does this work? And he said to me, and he was, I think at the time he was, 45 to 50 years old. He was younger than me. I was a young man. I was 25 years old, and he was probably 45 or 50. And he said, a long time ago, we came to the agreement that I change the tires and she changes the diapers. Which, in other words, he did the work outside the house, worked on the car, and she did the work inside the house. But I saw him after she had a long day of doing stuff in the house. And what he did was I saw him help her clear the table after dinner and load the dishwasher quickly, very efficiently, going above and beyond. And that was kind of cool. And I could just see her look up at him when he gave her, you know, like a little piece of pie or cake or a little scoop of ice cream and a cup of coffee. And we all were having dessert at the dinner table. And there was a synergy between them. It worked. It worked really well. And they're together to this day. I stalk them sometimes on social media just to see how the family's doing. And they're still married. It's amazing. But I will never forget that experience. I change the tires. She changes the diapers. So, how will household chores be divided? I had a talk with a woman, and she, and she felt that one of her love languages was had to do with acts of service. So helping her out around the house rather than expecting to be waited on was how she, how she measured love. 
he wasn't one of these fetch my slippers woman where's my dinner woman kind of guy he wasn't like that so how will household chores be divided like i like doing my own laundry and i don't mind doing laundry i just don't want to fold it <laughs> i don't mind ironing shirts and things that need to be ironed i know women that hate ironing I like ironing. It's relaxing to me. I put on my headset, listen to a couple podcasts, and I can iron all my shirts in an hour and 15 minutes. And if she needs something ironed, bring it on in, baby, because I'm listening to a podcast and I'll iron your dress or your blouse or whatever. I'll do that. Who will make dinner? Who will shop? Who will prepare the food? Who will wash the dishes? Who will load the dishwasher? Who will unload the dishwasher? Who will clean? Are you a clean freak? Is she a clean freak? All important things. 16, church. Church, are you gonna go to church? Where are you gonna go to church? How? How involved in church will you be? Will you go to Bible studies? Will, you, will men, will you go to a men's ministry breakfast? I always enjoyed like pancake breakfasts for men's ministries and they have a special guest speaker or a sports star or an author or someone who wrote a book and men are flipping pancakes and they're all in the kitchen making bacon and coffee and you know, and you have breakfast and then, you know, there's a speaker and then you know, you just, you bow your head for a little prayer and write down a prayer request on a piece of paper and put it in a basket or, so, you know, things like that. What will you do for church? I will be going to church when I'm married. And so will my wife be accompanying me. It's a conversation that needs to be had. If my wife does not want to do that, she will, if that woman does not want to do that, she will not be my wife. I am a, I am a guy that believes a family that prays together, stays together. That's, those are my values. If my woman doesn't want to do that, will not be my wife, period. That's, it's a deal breaker for me, big time. 17, geographical location. Where will you live? Are you going to live in the city? Suburbs, out in the country, the mountains? Will you be around people? Will you be isolated in the middle of nowhere? These things are part of the conversations that you must have before you marry or go into a long-term relationship. Where will you live? West coast, east coast, north, south, the middle of the country? Michael, I was thinking about, uh, I would love to have a, an animal rescue. I want to have a garden, a big garden. I had that when I was married. I haven't had that since I was married. I don't need, I don't need to be around neighbors. I don't need to be, uh, I don't need to be around people. I'm so happy by myself. I would love to have a woman by my side to share that with me. But I don't constantly need noise. I don't need the TV on. Some people got to have TV on. Some people got to have cable. If my wife wants to have cable, we'll have it. I prefer not. I do want to have a big flat screen on the wall. But you ever notice most living rooms and rec rooms, all the chairs are pointed towards a screen on the wall and not towards each other. And that is such a weird phenomenon. Prior to television, people actually, the chairs were facing each other, not facing an electronic, inanimate object mounted on the wall. A family can be facing that TV all night long and not 
have any words. I remember one of my favorite things that I did was when the kids were little and uh, it was after divorce, I remember having me on the couch with my three kids watching American Idol. God, I love that because it was, uh, I forget, was it on like Tuesday nights? I had the kids on Tuesday nights. I think it was Tuesday nights. Yeah, it was the typical divorced dad thing, uh, you know, every other weekend and one overnight during the week. And I'll never forget having the kids and we're all piled on the couch watching American Idol. We got excited about it. Like, can we make popcorn? Can we have ice cream? And we had popcorn and ice cream. My oldest son was sitting on the end of the couch. My daughter was my daughter. And my arm around her, and she's fiddling with my beard. And, and then my little, the little guy on my lap. And we're voting and giving a thumbs up or a thumbs down. And that kind of stuff brought us together as a family. American Idol was something that we looked forward to as a family. And it was... It was fun, but just putting on a TV program and not interacting with each other, not good, not good. Now, I have three children. I would love to have more kids. I really would. I, my goal was to have six children when I was younger, believe it or not. And some people say, yeah, but you'd never have a life. I don't mind making children my life. I don't mind that at all. Uh, if I met a woman and she wanted to have children and I felt that I can, uh, I felt that I could do it financially, I would have another child or two. I would. So I'll be an older dad. Who cares? Eighteen. How important is physical appearance? Some people let themselves go. I think it's good that you are always in the process of taking care of yourself. It never hurts to, it just, it never hurts to be in shape. Let me just talk to the men about physical appearance. Number one, you need to be strong. You need to be strong. You need to have a strong grip. Your yes needs to come from your body. Your no needs to come from deep within. You need to be friendly. These hands need to be loving. Hold a child. Brush your daughter's hair. Help your boy get his jammies on. Put your arm around your wife's waist. Make, to, make love to her gently. There's a noise outside, you grab a bat or the gun and you go outside to protect your family. There's some asshole out in public and you need to step up to the plate and be the wall between danger and chaos and your family. Because of that, your physicality is important. I have gray hair, a white beard. I'm five foot eleven, about two hundred pounds. I want to get down a little bit more. I'm strong. I'm in the top five percent of men my age, which is decreasing more and more every year. I'm fast. I'm not afraid to fight, to defend, to protect and provide. And so much of that has to do with my physicality, which needs to morph. I need to be loving and caring, but be able to lay the law down and protect and be a barrier for my family if they need me. Super important. Ladies, you think your man was attracted to you for your IQ? Wishful thinking, he was attracted to you for your beauty. Stay beautiful for your man, if that means losing weight. I know, I know, having kids does things to your body. I'm not 
discounting that and I am taking that into account. Stay beautiful and sexy for your man. It's never too late to start a self-improvement project. You can do it. I know you can. I know. I, I believe in you, ladies. I do. In a world where men are, you know, putting women down left and right, and sometimes rightfully so. Let's get real about it. I will tell you this, that there are some men that have their shit together, and there are women that have their shit together. And my prayer is that, and my hope, is that this one who has her shit together and this guy here who has his shit together, and the two become one. Okay. And number 19, why even get married? A conversation you need to have. Why would you even get married in this day and age? Holy cow. With over half of marriages ending in divorce, 70% of those marriages or those divorces are initiated by women. Why would a guy ever want to get divorced? It seems like the argument is heavier on the side of not getting married. I don't want to say don't get married, but I do want to say this, don't get married fast. Don't get married fast. Why get married? You've got to have that conversation a lot, a lot. And then 20, I said there was going to be 19. Someone did ask this. And I will say, what are your values? And let's talk about politics for a second. Many times our values, our politics stem from our values. Why seed the relationship with differences that could explode in the future? Women that I have pursued and that I will pursue in the future or the woman that I marry will have similar values in politics as me, consistent with my beliefs. Why try to make things harder when they don't have to be? So there you go. There's 20 things, 20 conversations that you must have before you even talk about long-term relationships or marriage. I hope you enjoyed it. I want to say thank you, special thanks to the moderators on this channel who are Bearded Welshman, Tony Bruno, T21 Surfer, my brother, Lucas Bittencourt, and the Bald Bastard, affectionately called BB. And I am looking for one or two more moderators that help things go smoother. The moderator task is that of Peacemaker, and also must have been a follower for a while and know what my values are and what my vibe is and that you promote, protect uh, those values and vibe while you are a moderator. Moderators don't get paid. Moderators are fans and uh, believers and practitioners in the mission that I have, and that is to make better people. That when you spend time with me, hopefully your IQ goes up a couple points. Hopefully your heart gets a little bit bigger. Hopefully your boundaries become a little bit stronger. Your mind gets a little more open. Your motivation gets a little more fire in it, and you become a more values-driven person. Thanks for joining me on a Sunday night. I got to get up early, because tomorrow I've got the Daybreak show at really early. So I get up at about 4 o'clock and press record at about 5, and then I have to get to the prison where I work by 7 o'clock. Thank you for joining me. There's a lot of 
a lot of choices that you had tonight here on YouTube and on television and on the web, but you chose to be with me and I am forever grateful for that. And as I like to say to everybody when I end my live broadcasts, peace be with you. And the proper response is, and also with you. Thank you.